and their interests, which is survival. And so we have to make tough choices to survive. But tough choices may also include conservation. And many times, if you have to choose between conserving and survival, uh, man beats out fish. Well, you see, the, there's something called a soft landing. And this is something that we propose a lot in, in fisheries management whenever issues like this come up. Yes, we say fishers must conserve, or we must say, I mean, lessen the effort. But then give us an alternative. Yes, give us an alternative. And Mr. Horton mentioned the whole aspect of resources that exist that we have not tapped into as yet. I, I must say that most of the research that has done so far, to my knowledge, is based on management trust, not development. If some more research was based on development, then we would have a basis on which we could diversify. And then we could guide fishers as to how we sustainably utilize the resources by using some of this and some of the other. Fisheries management is always about balancing uh, different needs. On the one hand, we have the, the, the need for development, we have the need to provide food and nutrition for our people. And on the other hand, we want to make sure that we have the, the fish stocks and, and the ecosystems remaining in a healthy state. In fact, the history of fisheries is really a history of erring on the side of the consumers. And this is why we face a situation where we have uh, wide, widespread overfishing globally, as well as in the region, which is why we have declining fish stocks, which is why we have ever-expanding fishing fleet, which is why we have you know, uh, the, the application of new technology and so on. Um, so, so the history of fisheries globally is one where we have uh, always um, erred in favor of providing employment, providing economic opportunities. But the truth is, for the long term, that is counterproductive. You're defeating the very thing that you're trying to achieve. It is, it is, it is because the, the constraints have, have not all been removed. Such as? I mean, we're working towards it, and a key, a key problem is the capacity of the fishermen. How do you, how do you consult with uh, fishermen in, 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 in areas where they're totally disorganized? They do not have a voice, they do not have an organization representing them. And that's one of the key things. Huh? I mean, fishermen in some places, as Michel said, they're more concerned about survival, and you cannot blame them. They need to make sure that they have food to put on the table at the end of the day. They need to make sure they have money to send their kids to school. And so their focus, in many cases, is on survival, bringing in the bread just to be able to get by the, the, you know, for the next day, the next week, etc. We have to change all that, and we have to work with the fishermen so that we can build up their organizational capabilities so that they can sit at the table with policymakers and with scientists and defend their point of view and defend their interests and play an important role in the future management, in the future decision-making, in the future in, in development and, 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 uh, and elaboration of these policies that we are, that we are working on. Right. I mean, there's no alternative to that, but it will take time. And we can't wait until the fishermen are fully organized before we start the process. So we have to uh, you know, uh, do the best we can in these circumstances. And, and, and that is a part of the challenge for the, for the common fisheries policy too, to ensure that we are able to work with the fishermen to ensure that they continue to build their capacities in, 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 in all areas and to, and, to, and to take more responsibility for the, 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 the management of the industry that they depend on for their livelihoods. Well, governance, simply put, is making societal decisions for the public good. And that involves not only governments, as you point out, but all of us. Uh, each of us, as a citizen of a country, has a responsibility to play, ultimately, in the sustainable management of our marine resources. Um, some of the research we've been doing uh, are looking at transboundary linkages, 
trying to look, even, for example, in the area of science. Uh, one of uh, the students, and there are several students, some in this room who are getting uh, graduate degrees through the project, are looking at flows of information, communication, looking at the fact that in many cases, uh, one finding is that national fisheries authorities in the Eastern Caribbean do not talk to each other as much as they talk to regional organizations like CRFM. You're talking about fisheries divisions in the We're talking about fisheries divisions in, the uh, in particular. Uh, they will talk to uh, regional organizations, but not necessarily communicate to each other. And one wonders why in the era of email, of internet, of websites, of sometimes cheap phone calls through the internet, that there isn't more communication, more exchange of information, and there isn't the type of uh, solidarity, uh, although sometimes one can also have friction and conflict at all, is part of decision making between the countries. We have to recognize that if we are going to be discussing this, this topic that we have to recognize that the fisher folks, that they are the most important persons. And I want to give an example. When I work in the sugar industry dealing with the smallholders, I never left that office until they were satisfied. I never turned back a small cane supplier. I always made the point that that is the person providing the job for myself. And I think sometimes that Persons in her position need to understand that the fisher folk are the ones that create the jobs for them, and that is in their interest to ensure that their interest, that the fisher folk's interest, is represented and protected. Sometimes I get the impression that the reverse is true, and I think that we need, even from a governmental point of view, because sometimes the politicians get a lot of blame. But when you look at it, you can come up with the best ideas. But when you put them out there to be implemented by the persons who should implement them, they drag their feet on them, and they find all sorts of flimsy excuses why they can be implemented. And you will hear that the politicians, that they're all about talk and no action, not recognizing that they are the persons with policy and there are other people who must implement the policy. So are you suggesting that there are bureaucrats that drag their feet when they have uh, an issue of uh, policy of governing a, a resource that is so critical to so many thousands of Caribbean people and they're not doing it because they what? They have an, an, an interest that is directly um, diametrically opposed to what Caribbean community governments have agreed to? Well, I can't say that... Um I can't be as broad of you. Well, you were being you. very broad, so no, no, but let's I narrow say, it down I a bit. I have to say some. I can't say all, because I can tell you that there are some bureaucrats who understand the agenda, and they will do everything within their power to ensure that it's implemented and protected. And they understand that the system works from a bottom-up and not a top-down. And that's the problem. Well, the policy, as I indicated before, is a framework document. It is setting out the basic principles and basic rules to achieve sustainable use of our fishery resources and to improve the socioeconomic contribution that these resources can make to our development. CARICOM or the CRFM, we are not supranational bodies. Uh, we are working with sovereign states, and it's very, very important to remember that dimension. Um, and there's always that tension between um, how, how much the distribution of power between at the regional level and, the, and, and at, at, at the national level. And the countries are all very touchy about um, the, 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 the amount of power that regional bodies take on in the region. The, 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 the right to make whatever decision they want that they think is in the best interest of their people. And, uh, you know, we can't get away from that. But, I mean, let's look at it um, from another perspective. The truth is there are principles